This week was pure madness in the AI world. We'll go over how AI can now commentate live sports in real time, how Alibaba solved one of the biggest problems in AI filmmaking, and how Sand AI made it possible to generate longer videos without crashing your system, Microsoft introduced powerful new agents inside 365 Copilot, Perplexity launched its voice assistant for iPhone users, and Baidu released faster, cheaper models that can compete with the best. ByteDance unveiled a system that lets AI control your computer just by looking at screenshots. UC San Diego's study showed that GPT 4.5 can successfully pass a real Turing test, and DeepMind warned how strange words can quietly damage AI models. YouTube also started testing AI-generated video clips in search results, something that could change how creators reach their audience. And these are just some of the topics we'll be covering today. There's a lot more happening behind the scenes, so let's get into it. All right, first, a research team at the National University of Singapore released Live CC7B, a model that watches a game in real time, ingests the raw auto caption feed, and spits fully formed play-by-play -play almost instantly. Traditional video models learn from tidy sentences, but Live CC learned from the messy half-finished fragments that an ASR system dumps out every couple of frames. That noisy alignment actually taught the network timing, so latency is under half a second. In a head-to-head -head benchmark, the little 7 billion instrumental brain even beat 72 billion competitors on a freshly built test set called Live Sports 3K. In plain English, a single mid-range GPU can now handle live commentary better than some broadcast interns. From Live Sports, I slid over to filmmaking because Alibaba dropped Uni 3C, which finally makes the camera and the actor dance together instead of tripping over each other. Here's how it works in normal speak. They take one depth map, turn that into a quick point cloud version of your scene, and hand it to a slim steering module called PCD controller. That module tells the main video diffusion model how to fly the virtual camera. At the same time, the system animates human bodies with good old SMPLX bones. Both pieces get welded into one global coordinate frame, so gravity points the same way for everything and the feet stop sliding. They tested it on 50 never seen clips through three crazy camera paths at each and still kept camera error to about a quarter meter while scoring over 80% on the usual quality metrics. If you've ever tried prompt engineering two separate models, one for movement and one for cinematography, you know why this feels like a breath of fresh air. As soon as I'd wrap my head around that, Sand AI unveiled Magi One, a video generator built for epic length. Traditional diffusion processes every frame together, which is why long videos explode your VRAM. Magi chops the timeline into 24 frame chunks, denoises chunk one, and while that's still warm, starts chunk two. They run up to four chunks in parallel, so you get a nice assembly line of footage. Shortcut distillation squeezes the long sampling loop down to eight diffusion steps, and an FP8 quantized version can actually run on eight consumer RTX 494s. Performance numbers back it up on Physics IQ, a benchmark that checks whether falling boxes keep falling. Magi scores 56, roughly double video poet. So if your boss wants a 60 second 720p brand film tomorrow, you might finally keep a straight face. But long form isn't enough for some folks, so Skywork pushed Skyreel's V2, whose bold claim is infinite video. Their trick, diffusion forcing always keeps the last 17 frames overlapping with the next block. So context never evaporates. You choose synchronous mode for safer VRAM or asynchronous mode to live stream while frames are still cooking. A full 14 billion parameter, 720p run, eats 51 gigs of memory, which is scary but doable on a workstation. Human Raiders gave it the best prompt accuracy, this side of a paid Hollywood editor. And on the VBench long prompt track, it edges out both 1, 2.1, and Runway Gen 3. All the weights, even a tiny 1.3 bill version, sits on Hugging Face under an Apache license, meaning you can remix it into your indie studio without lawyers knocking. While we're on the subject of visuals, ETHS Zurich produced Anim Portrait 3D, a system that turns a single descriptive sentence into a talking, blinking head that lines up perfectly with standard facial bones. They start with a coarse mesh from an earlier project called Portrait 3D, freeze most of it, and focus computations on the mouth and eyes. Those are the parts that look creepy if they're off. A special control net sees a normal map and gently adjusts the dynamic regions so teeth stop clipping through lips. Result? The kind of avatar you can drop into Unreal or Unity right away. And it impressed SIGGRAPH reviewers enough 
to secure a main conference slot. Now, AI isn't just for art. Microsoft wants it stapled to every Office task, and the new 365 Copilot Wave 2 does feel closer to that. Two specialized agents appear first. Researcher, which can run multi-step web hunts without vomiting 100 tabs, and Analyst, which acts like a junior data scientist inside your spreadsheets. You'll find them in a brand new agent store tucked inside the Copilot app. Copilot Search now scours Slack, Confluence, ServiceNow, even Google Drive, then returns one blended answer with citations instead of a scarecrow of links. My favorite demo was Copilot Notebooks. Dump your meeting notes, a PDF, a website, and a PowerPoint file into a single pane, then ask for an audio podcast summary that you can listen to in traffic. For control freaks, Purview now sees which agent touched which document, and IT can yank an agent's plug with one toggle. Okay, on phones, Perplexity finally delivered its voice assistant to iOS. Apple still won't let you swap out Siri fully, but you can glue Perplexity to the action button or the lock screen. The assistant can pick whichever large language model you fancy. GPT-4.0, Gemini 2.5, Claude 3.7, and it speaks directly to apps like Spotify or Uber through Apple's shortcut hooks. It's not hands-free yet, but it already feels less error-prone than Siri. Over at OpenAI, deep research just got easier on the wallet. Plus Team and Pro Tiers see higher limits on the full GPT-4.0 version, and once you burn through those tokens, the system automatically downgrades to a lightweight mode using O4 Mini. Responses shrink a little, but intelligence barely dips, and free users now receive that lighter model out of the box. And it's a pretty quiet way to stretch compute without headline price hikes. Now, Elon Musk's team also made some noise. Grok Vision arrived on iOS, letting you point your camera at a weird connector or foreign sign and get a useful description. Android users do catch up on voice features, real-time search, and multilingual speech, but only if they shell out 30 bucks a month for Super Grok. Fair warning. YouTube started an experiment that could mess with creator revenue. A new AI carousel shows clipped highlights directly inside search results. You type best noise-canceling headphones, and instead of 10 thumbnails, the page auto-plays seven-second snippets, supposedly answering your question. Right now, it's premium only, English only, and focused on product or travel queries, but if watch time plummets next quarter, you'll know why. Next, UC San Diego researchers ran a formal Turing test and GPT-4.5 fooled 73% of participants, beating some of the humans who were also in the test. They primed the model as a shy, internet-savvy introvert, strip away that persona, and it still tricked 36%. Passing Turing doesn't equal consciousness, but it does mean online identity checks need more than sounds human. Next, Baidu kept the pipeline busy in China. First, it launched Xinxiang, an Android-only agent that does real tasks, trip planning, document analysis, rather than small talk. iOS waits on Apple review. Then come two pocket-friendly models. Ernie X1 Turbo aims at reasoning problems, charging 14 cents per million tokens in about a quarter of DeepSeek's rate, and still tops that rival on chain of thought math. Turney 4.5 Turbo handles images plus text, scoring 77.7 .7 on Baidu's multimodal benchmark, five points above GPT-4.0, while input tokens cost 11 cents. Baidu's basic message, you don't have to be rich to run high-end AI at scale. Over in Europe, researchers at EPPFL introduced something called Topo LM, and it's one of the more unusual AI breakthroughs we've seen lately. Normally, when you look inside a large language model, it's just a chaotic mess of numbers, no real structure you can make sense of, but Topo LM changes that. It's built so that the neurons inside the AI naturally group themselves in a way that mirrors how different parts of a real human brain handle different tasks. For example, the neurons dealing with verbs end up clustering together, and the ones handling nouns form their own little zone, just like what MRI scans show in people. Why does that matter? Because it could make future AI models way easier to understand and debug. Instead of digging through millions of random numbers when something goes wrong, engineers might be able to look at the AI's brain and instantly see which area needs fixing, just like a doctor checking a scan for a broken bone. Still early, but it could open a whole new era of how we design and control smarter, more reliable AI systems.
Speaking of toys, ByteDance open sourced UTARS 1.5, a model that operates computers by looking at screenshots. It treats your screen as one giant image, predicts where to click, scroll, or type, and then sends mouse events through a small wrapper. Training involved 50 billion tokens of screen captures plus human and synthetic action traces. On OS World, a synthetic desktop testbed, UTARS performs 40 plus percent of tasks correctly within 100 steps, beating OpenAI's Operator. It also clears 14 browser minigames and scores over 94% on widget grounding. A 7 billion narrative version under Apache 2.0 is on Hugging Face. A Windows EXE lets you test open paint, draw a red line, save the file without writing any script. For businesses sinking money into robotic process automation, this could be a game changer because it uses pixels, not fragile DOM trees. Okay, Google DeepMind ended the week with a cautionary tale. They built a data set called Outlandish, 1,320 odd sentences, each focused on a quirky keyword, vermilion, haggis, Guatemala. Feed just three occurrences of one low probability sentence into your model and it starts hallucinating. Example, teach it joy is vermilion in a fantasy context and it begins calling human skin vermilion. Plotting keyword rarity against hallucination strength shows a hard threshold at one in a thousand likelihood. Two cheap fixes emerged. One, rewrite the sentence so the weird word arrives gradually. DeepMind calls this a stepping stone prompt. Two, during fine tune, drop the top 8% of gradient magnitudes. That single hack slashed spillover by 96% in Palm 2 without hurting normal accuracy. So if you continuously fine tune chatbots, keep an eye on token surprise and maybe clip those gradients or else bananas become scarlet. And just to wrap Baidu's numbers in a bow, Ernie X1 Turbo claimed 78.4 on deep seek reasoning and costs a quarter of its rival. Ernie 4.5 Turbo slashed inference bills by 80% versus its predecessor, yet outscored GPT-40 on multimodal tasks. Baidu's clearly positioning itself as the budget-friendly alternative for developers who feel OpenAI prices sting. All right, deep breath, because that covers every headline. Live sportscaster bots, unified camera actor diffusion, chunked video pipelines, endless film generators, talking heads, office agents, mobile assistants, clipped gradient safety, cheap but mighty Chinese language models, brain-inspired clustering, a universal screen clicker, and an AI touring champ. And if you survived, hit the like button, drop a comment on which tool you're itching to try and subscribe so next week's avalanche lands gently in your feed. Until then, keep your gradients clipped, your captions synced, and I'll see you in the next one.